What is going on ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to be going over how you can deploy a Spring Boot application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. This will allow you to be able to communicate with your API using a endpoint that AWS generates for you once you upload the application to Elastic Beanstalk. So let's get started. Alright, so now we're in the Spring Boot application and this is the same Spring Boot application that I created my tutorial for on how to you know, create an API using Spring Boot. I'll leave a link somewhere on the screen, but um, I commented out the Postgres database portion of it because um, I want to create a separate video for that of how to connect your um, or, or how to connect a data source to Elastic Beanstalk, but that'll make this video way too long. So uh, I'll create a separate video um, for that and it's going to be using an AWS RDS instance. So um, but yeah, now I'll do that for another video. But for this one, all you're gonna need is in your application app properties. So if you open it up, hope you guys can see my screen well because I try to zoom it, zoom it in a little bit. But if you go to the resource folder and you open up application properties, like I said, I commented out the data source and all that. But all you're gonna need is server.port is equal to 5000. This is going to set the port to now listen to 5000. Uh, by default, if you don't define this, uh, Spring Boot is going to listen on 8080, but Elastic Beanstalk um, expects for your application to listen to five on 5000, so uh, we have to set it to that. And then, um, for most of the controller stuff, uh, I commented out. The only you know piece that I want is to check that I'm actually able to make a call to my API. So I added this get mapping um, that's going to return a response entity that will say, okay, we're able to actually hit this endpoint. And then once we're able to confirm that, so you can go in and, and make, make some changes or if you want to add in your database and, and add your services and all that, you could do that. But just for this tutorial, I'm just making it basic. I just want to know that I can actually reach this endpoint. So I created one specific to that. But you don't need this. If you have a very basic application or even if you have a, a application that needs a data source, you can still do that. Um, just like I said, I'm just going to create a separate video to show that. Um, but for the most part, you need to server that port equal to 5,000. And the second thing that we need to do is we have to build our application. So let me just close these up. Let me delete this target folder. Um, and we got to build the application because we actually just need to make a target folder um, with the most up to date information about our application. The target folder is going to generate a jar file, which is our application pretty much conf compiled up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to use this command to build the application, the package our application using Maven. So let me compile it now using this uh, command that I have already copied, uh, this Maven command, Maven package, and I have a flag to skip the test. And I'll leave that in the comment section or somewhere on the screen so you guys can easily see. But as you can see, it says build success. So all you got to do is click somewhere here because sometimes it doesn't pop up automatically. You kind of click it to refresh it and boom, there's now a target folder and this contains um, what we need. So what I have this project named as a demo, right? Because you know this this is what I use to demo the application to you guys, or when I created my tutorial series. Um, but this will contain demo, the version, uh, and then a dash snapshot dot jar. We don't really need the jar the original. We just need this one. This is the file that we're gonna upload to Elastic Beanstalk. That's what it's expecting for a Java application. So that's what we're gonna use. Um, so that's really all you need. You gotta make sure the server that ports 5000 and then we have to generate our application, uh, compile it and package it um, into a draw file. And now we can just go to AWS and upload it and go from there. All right, so we're back on the console. Hopefully you guys logged in. If you didn't, then go ahead and log in and you should see something similar to this. Hopefully you're not accruing some costs or maybe hopefully you are. That means you're, that means you're working on some projects. But um, as you can see, in my recently visited Elastic Beanstalk is there, but I'm going to use the search bar and type Elastic Beanstalk. And that should be right here. And now we're on the home page. And, you know, I don't have any projects being hosted right now. So I should be able to see this screen right here to get started. And I'm going to press create application. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name of TWG Spring Boot API. Cool. 
Now, if you want some additional tags, you can do that. You know, AWS Love Tags is good to give um, your application some meaning, right? Using a key value pair, but I'm not gonna put any tags. And then scroll down a bit, and we can choose what platform we're gonna run it on. So the platform I'm gonna choose is Java. This is a Java application, um, so that's what I'm gonna choose. Um, then you can choose the version, right? So um, you can either choose Java 17, 11, or 8, but in this case, I'm gonna choose 17. Platform version recommended, I'm gonna leave that as such, but you can, actually, I think there's only one option, so <laughs> you keep it at that, 3.4.4. And in this case, I'm not using a sample application, I wanna upload my own code. Um, so the cool thing about it is that you can put your S3 URL here if you have it hosted in S3, but in this case, I'm gonna choose it from local file. All right, so it, it took me a little bit, so I kind of skipped out of it, but I found the jar file that we packaged uh, in the beginning of the video, and it should say file successfully uploaded. So once you see that, um, the last step is if you want to add some additional application code tags, you can, but I'm not. Um, and, and you can change the label here if you want to, but I'm just going to call it TWG Spring Boot API dash source. Um, actually, it generated it for me. So I'm just going to leave it how it is. If you want to configure more options, you can, because um, there's a lot more settings that you can you know, put, um, like monitoring, updates, notifications, if you want to put an email, database information, uh, if you want to set up for multi-ACs, uh, capacity, like for because this is going to generate an EC2 instance for you. But um, this is going to create a T2 micro for me, uh, because I want it to be free. So. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to update that information, if you want to make it bigger, smaller, um, and if you want to, you know, put in a database here, you can. Um, Security-wise, if you want to put a VPC, you can. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more configurations that you can. Like I said, I'm using a single instance because I'm trying to make it as free as possible, if eligible. That's why it says free tier eligible. But if you want to make it high availability, uh, if you want to put a custom configuration, you can. So like I said, Elastic Beanstalk. Um, provides a lot of or like I said in my, my Elastic Beanstalk video it provides a lot of ways for you to define specification it defines a lot of ways for you to um, provide specifications based on what you need for your application that's why I like it you know if you don't want to set everything up individually you can just have Elastic Beanstalk do it for you uh, so yeah that is the configuration piece but I'm not gonna need that I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna create the application with the most basic setup right because I want it to be free so I'll give it a little little bit a couple of seconds or minutes for this to, to actually build properly and create my application or my app and then um, we can use that endpoint to test whether or not it is actually fully running and also all this data that you're that you uploaded to um, run your application it will be on s3 because elastic beanstalk also uses s3 to hold your files which we'll see in a few but um you see all the different types of services that elastic beanstalk interact with just to get your application running that you don't have to deal with that it does for you so yeah we'll be back or i'll be back in a few all right so if you go to the environments tab which i'm already in but if it's not ready yet you should probably see pending but um, since it is ready now, it's gonna say health is okay. If I click on it, then you also see more information in regards to your application. Um, it already generated a endpoint or a domain for my application, so I can use this to have access to my application. It tells you what platform you're running your application on, like the running version. If you wanna upload and deploy a newer version, you can do that from here, um, and then it tells you the details about the recent events about your application and then there's also more information if you want to configure your application so if you want to view the logs monitoring I'm pretty sure this was disabled oh actually it gives you information about the in and out and CPU usage here that's pretty cool I thought it was I, I thought it was disabled um, then there's configuration so if you want to make some more you can do that um, so like information about the capacity the load balancer if you have you know multiple instances of your server uh, the load balancer will be useful security monitoring notifications like I said you can put your email for that if you want to set up a VPC you can um, right now this is not part of a VPC and if you want to add in a database you can um, and then if you go to software here then you can 
provide some environment properties. Say, for instance, you want to inject some environment variables into your application, you can do that from here. Um, these are already generated for us. But um, if you want to add more, then you just you know put the key or the name and then place the value and then press apply. So this is what we'll use to actually put our database information. So we're going to create, or I'm going to create a Postgres instance in RDS, and then I'm going to place the user, the password, all the information here, apply it, and then it should inject that information to our Spring Boot application. So that will be done from here. That will be in a separate video. Um, and yeah, if you want to store your, your S3 log information, you can do that from here, enable that. And yeah, if you want to go to your environments or go to the endpoints that they provide, if you press that, then it'll bring you here. So, uh, but you know, right now it's not going to show anything because I don't have anything um, on my Spring Boot application that will be displayed. So it's just going to be a white label error page. So cool. And then you can see application versions. If we deploy another version, then you'll see it here. Uh, save configurations. I don't have any configurations, so you're not going to see it. I go back to um, environments and it's showing some severe health. Um, so let me see the causes of that. So it's saying 100% things are failing. So let me just take that um, endpoint and see if I can actually just reach the um, the endpoint that I created. So the, the the test endpoint that I created, just to see that I'm at least able to see um, that information from the controller of my Spring Boot application. That's all I want to see. All right. So now I'm in Postman. I copied over this endpoint that was provided by AWS. So I'm going to go back to Postman. I'm going to enter that into the request URL. And if I go over to my IntelliJ that's holding my application, you'll see that the endpoint is going to be API slash test. So if I put slash API slash test, then this should return what I'm expecting is able to hit endpoint. So if I send that, then I am able to now see my endpoint. So that's, this is working. The reason why it was showing severe was because of the fact that when I was trying to go to just this endpoint or just without the API that's test, it wasn't going to work because we don't have uh, an endpoint for that. So it's going to assume that it's failing. But since we're able to hit API slash test, we're good to go. Our application is, is being hosted properly. So cool. So if you want to see more information in regards to the application that you just uploaded, or that you just deployed, you can go to environments and you can see the environment name. You can see the health, which right now is still showing severe. Uh, but we confirmed that it's working. Uh, we can see the application name, the date that is created, the last time it was modified, the URL can be retrieved from here, um, the version, which you know we had the option to change when we created the platform, the platform states, and the tier name. So all the information that you really need can be from here. But if you want to go dive in a little bit deeper, then you can go to this uh, page right here and make some more configurations. So hope you guys found that helpful. In the next video that I create in regards to Elastic Beanstalk, I'm going to show how to get that database integrated together um, so that if you created a database outside of this space, because you, you can create a database while creating your application with Elastic Beanstalk, which is cool. But if you already have a database on the outside, I'm going to show how you can first create an RDS, R, RDS database, Postgres database. And then I'm going to show you guys how you can connect that with the current Elastic Beanstalk application. So I'm going to upload a new version of our application. It's going to use um, the database source or the data source uh, from the new Postgres instance in our in AWS RDS. So stay tuned for that. Go ahead and leave a like, subscribe um, for that. If you, and um, that should be coming very soon. So just so that I'm not considered a liar, um, I'm going to show you guys how Elastic Beanstalk um, saves your information. So if you go to S3, this is AWS S3, you can see that Elastic Beanstalk creates their own bucket to put your information in. So you should see Elastic Beanstalk dash the region that you, um, you know, created your Elastic Beanstalk um, deployment on, and then some type of ID. So if I click on it and I go in it, you can see some of the jar files that I've uploaded in the past. So I, I did a to-do um, deployment back in February using the to-do jar. But if you go down a little bit more, you can see that um, the recent upload that we did, which is today is March 5th. So the most recent one is this demo snapshot. And I have two here, but um, the most recent one is here. And then the resources folder hold information in regards to the environments and the runtime. So yeah, S3 hosts or holds information in regards to that. And 
different versions or how versioning is done is through here it grabs the proper version from here so yeah hope you guys enjoy that and hope you found that useful and if you ever need the specific version that you deployed you can always go to this s3 bucket and retrieve it from here or if you want to upload a specific um, version you can always go to that specific version and just get the url which is the aws url because remember elastic beanstalk lets you uh, use the s3 url to deploy your application so this is different ways that you can use it so hope you guys find that useful go ahead and leave a like subscribe and like i said more is coming soon